Just got some some unfortunate news to share. We're not going to have Bennett Christian this season. Um, he tested positive for a banned supplement in January. Um, feels terrible. He knows he made a mistake. Uh, still going to practice with us. Um, he's still an important part of the team. You know, he's a he's a great young man who made a mistake. He's got a great family, um, and I commend him for being transparent. Uh, he ex accepts his responsibility. He wants to share his story, um, you know, with everybody and with the team, which will will allow him to do. Uh, later today, um, so others don't make the same mistake. So there's a, there's a statement from Bennett <clears throat> uh, explaining his situation, and that uh, Jerry will get all to all of you guys shortly. So I just wanted to give you guys that update. All right, we'll open up the floor for questions. Thank you, Coach. Uh, yep. Third row right, Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette. Ryan, talking about separation in this quarterback room as you're looking forward as camp progresses, how much separation does there need to be? Is, is it enough that one guy does maybe this one thing better, but they're otherwise even, or does it need to be a sizable gap there? What kind of separation are you looking for? Yeah, you'd like a sizable gap to to name a starter for sure. Um, it's hard to name somebody when there 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 isn't a significant gap, like you said. So, um, we're looking for someone to emerge. Um, there's been good things. There's been um, you know things that they want back, and um, I, I appreciate their competitiveness right now. They're going at it every day. Um, we are not ready to name a starter right now. Um, you know in and so the competition will continue this week. I guess following up on that, if it came down to starting two quarter, playing two quarterbacks in Indiana or picking one guy, would you still need to see that sizable gap or would you, would you go to a two quarterback I, Yeah, I think that's something we have to decide this week probably is that um, are we ready to um, you know, name somebody by the end of the week or do, does the competition continue into the season? You know, uh, That's not ideal, uh, but if that's where we're at, then that's what we'll do. Ryan, when you see Tyler Malone out there working with, with the defensive line and, and getting in the backfield, is that what you guys expected from him right away, or has he kind of caught you guys by surprise compared to what you thought you were getting from him? Taiwan Malone. Yeah, um, Taiwan is, is someone that we recruited out of high school who was a baseball player and a football player and split his time when he was in high school and, and at Ole Miss. You know, um, and so, you know, we felt like if he just completely devoted himself to football, we were able to get the best version of Taiwan. And so we've seen so far uh, flashes that he can do it. Um, but, you know, it's going to go back to, you know, you get to this point of preseason camp. I'm going to continually say this. It's about the consistency of doing it all the time. Um, but we, we see the ability, and, and we know that um, if, if he shows consistency, that he can help us. Ryan, we saw Josh Simmons at left tackle on Friday. Are you guys looking at him as the leader at left tackle right now? I think he's had some really good practices, and, and he's shown that he can be a, the starting left tackle. Uh, he has not won that job yet, but he has shown traits that make us believe that, that he can be that guy. And, you know, but the other side, right tackle, are you guys looking at Josh Fryer primarily right at that spot right now? Yeah, he's he's somebody that went, you know, he's he's kind of gone back and forth a little bit. He's got flexibility that way. Some guys, um, you know, they really struggle moving. You know, Dewan really struggled doing that. Uh, you know, some guys, it's not not as hard uh, for Josh. Uh, he feels comfortable playing on the right side, um, and so so is Luke. You know, and so, you know, we've kind of like we talked about last week. We've looked at who's going to be the best moving forward for the long term. We felt like um, Simmons gave us an opportunity to. So maybe look at him over there and then figure out where to go moving forward. Um, so Tegra is, is moved over to the left as well. Um, we've kind of settled into that the last few practices. And we felt like if we were going to make that move, we had to make it early on in the preseason. Um, and I think it's going to be the best for the long term. But we'll continue to evaluate it. Ryan, how long into a camp would you want to keep doing the split squad stuff to get double the reps? <clears throat> You know, I think one of the questions for the line, for the young players, for the quarterbacks, you know, how do you how do you split up the reps? And the more reps you get, uh, the better off. <clears throat> we're 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 in a situation where we're we're in a constant battle to get these guys reps, and so the split field has allowed us to get so many more, almost not double, but a lot more reps. Um, I'm actually probably going to have them take a look at it because. Um, in the past, we would go ones, twos, and then we get the threes in there. But there's two. There's a couple issues with that. The first issue is when you go ones, twos, and threes all in the same field. By the time you get to the threes, the ones kind of 
know, they've been standing over there for a while. You, know, you want to get practice going. And so we're able to get, um, you know, 48 reps in about a 12-minute period, and that's, that's pretty good work. Um, so as we get closer, you know, we also have – and that's only really in, in one of the periods. So when we go in an hour-and-a-half practice or a three-hour or a two-hour practice, um, you know, we have one field where we'll just go ones and twos, We'll get a rack of threes, and then we'll come back ones and twos, and that's just all in one field. So we're, we're combining them. Um, one of the things that it's allowed us to do, having 120 guys in camp, is do that. In the past, when they capped it at 110, you weren't able to do that. So this has allowed us to get way more reps, and certainly as we get into you know the end of this week, uh, next week, and game week, then it certainly changes. But uh, we've been able to get some really good good on good work, but also a lot more reps than in the past. I'm not a coach, so obviously you're, you're making these decisions with the, from a different point of view. When, uh, when you have situations like the second team offensive line against JT, and I, I, we only see two practices, so I know it's not that way all the time, does the push to get the maximum amount of reps sometimes come at the expense of quality reps? And what's the balance in your mind? No, we get a ton of good on good work. Yeah. So, you know, if you if you see a little bit of that, that's probably to find out if, you know, our second team guys can can block, you know, give them an opportunity to play against the first team guys and see what that looks like. So we'll go ones on twos, twos on war, uh, one, some. But mostly the work is is good on good. Fourth or right, Cameron Keith Robinson, the athletic. Brian, in, in the scrimmage on Saturday, is there something that you've learned um, that, you, that you had seen the first few weeks of camp? Um, no, not, not much that I, that I learned. Um, I thought, you know, some guys really stepped up. I thought there was a physicality in, in that uh, scrimmage that was, was great for the first opportunity to tackle. I thought we tackled well on defense. It was a couple of missed tackles, but it was, it was good to get guys on the ground. It was good to see Evan Pryor get his feet back underneath him. You know, I think he was feeling his way around the first couple drives and then really started to run better later on. Um, I thought Cody Simon really showed up. Um, he did some really good things. You know, we had we, we did a champions. We kind of graded guys out and, and did a, a mock champions because you know want to get guys in a rhythm of understanding. You know, if you grade out eighty percent or higher, you're a champion, and that's the goal for you know the position coaches and the units for guys to grade out a champion. So we recognize those. Um, but no, I mean overall, I thought it was solid. I thought it was um, consistent with what we've seen in practice. I just want to follow up on Bennett. That test was an, an internal test, and then that triggered some sort of mandatory. It was an NCAA test. Okay. Yeah. And that, in the, what is the mandatory then? I guess he's out for a for a year. Season. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you go into a little more detail about what you saw from the quarterback play in the scrimmage? What were you? How were you? I guess testing them in that capacity and in. What did you see from both of those guys? Yeah, in, in, in the format that we had, we, we, um, we had some move it. We had a first and second down a situation where we run and play action pass where we stayed up thud um, and, and kept you know, some of our guys out of, out of the tackling situation that maybe had a non-contact shoulders or different things. And, um, and that, was, that was solid, first and second down. I thought they did well. Uh, we then transitioned to a move it period where it was hot and cold. There were some things that were good. Um, you know, didn't really see the consistency that you want out of a, a starter, but there was some good things. You know, moved the team down the field a couple times, um, so I thought there was some good things there. Then we went on to a third down period, um, where you know I, I think the defense did a great job there. There was um, improvement from the first few third down periods that we've had um, on offense, but still not where we need to be. There was a coming out period that I thought um, you know. For the most part, the quarterbacks took care of the job and did their part there, and then it went to the red zone, and um, you know it was okay. wasn't wasn't great on on either end. So I guess my bottom the bottom line is you know there were some good things there, but there was also some plays that you know they would want back. And so again, we're looking for the consistency there. And I keep going back to the fact that I don't feel like um, there needs to be extraordinary play. It's making the routine plays routinely. And taking care of the football, period. Um, I think we have to understand situational football. I think that's important, and then ultimately leading the team down the field. So those are the areas that we've been emphasizing, and you know, the competition will continue this week. 
Brian, with two new quarterbacks, running game obviously would help to break them in. How do you judge that? How do you build that to uh, in camp when you can't necessarily be as physical as you'd like? Yeah, um, the running game is going to be very important. You think about the first years for you know Justin and for CJ, it was important to have a good running game. Um, and we learned the lesson on that in the Oregon game, in my opinion, on offense. You have to be able to run the football when you get in the red zone, when you get in third down situations, first and second down, it sets up play action pass. So it's something that we've been spending a lot of time on. And, um, you know, I like our progress there, but we got to keep building on it. When you, when it's good. You, you can tell. I mean, yeah, just week in or week in and week out, day in and day out, you just feel it. You know, I mean, it's the ball's getting to the second level, Trey's hitting the hole, the timing, the guy's rocking off the ball. Um, you can see it when you're out there. And, um, and there's, there's promise here. Um, I mean, by the end of this week, you, you'd like to know where you're at um, in a lot of areas. You know, this is kind of the last week we can just focus on football because classes start next Tuesday. So you know, by the end of this week, you know, you, you got to know. I, well, I think right now we know what we need to work on. I mean, that, that, you know, we have a list of things. Here are the things we got to get better at this week. Here are some things we feel like um, we're doing well. But I said to the staff, you know, by, by Saturday, you know, we, we need to have our identity kind of etched in stone on where we're at. And you know, we say it all the time, you have your fastballs, then you have your change-ups and curveballs. But we better know where the fastballs are and then continue to get better at the change-ups and curveballs. Right next door, Rob Aller, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, related to that, when you have an inexperienced quarterback, quarterbacks, what's the focus or emphasis for the offensive line? Is it is the message you got to protect this guy? Is it pass protect? Is it we got to run? Is it a little bit of everything? I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I, well, I think the, the message for the whole offense is that, you know, whether it's the line or the, the receivers, is that, you know, they, they need a good picture of the quarterbacks. And the only way to get a good picture in the passing game is to, you know, space out the routes. It's to give them a good good pocket. You know, it's to, it's to be clean. I mean, they have to be on their game early on uh, for young quarterbacks. Um, so I, I think that's important. But, to your point, staying on schedule is going to be critical for young. You know, if you're if you're behind the sticks, you know anybody, you know, forget who it is, C.J. Stroud, anybody, you know, that 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 puts us in a bad spot. So we have to be efficient. We have to be good on first down, uh, and that means you know running the ball for four mar four yards or more, and then being able to uh, execute efficiently. You know, the, the RPO game, the you know the the quick game, and then the play action pass. Up far right, Justin Holbrook, WCMH. Going back to the split field. Curious, have you seen leaders emerge where maybe they wouldn't have a chance to otherwise yeah. if they're in a setting where their voice, maybe they don't know how to find it, and then you have a guy that gets more comfortable when it's like that? Yeah, I, I totally see what you're saying, and I agree with it. I, th I think what happens when you're you know, the two or the three, you just kind of sit back and watch somebody else do it, where when you're over there, like, it's fight or flight, you know, and I, I think, like, if, you know, you're – you know, Tegra Shibola and, and you know, you're, you're now with the ones on that field, like you, you've got to do your job. There's nowhere, there's nowhere else to go. And uh, I have seen that. I've seen some guys step up in that matter because there's more of an expectation there. It's not like I'm going to wait for somebody else to come because he's not on this field. I'm the one on this field and I got to go win this rep. Before the corners getting their hands on more balls, is that what you saw on Saturday too? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they're, they're, I feel like right now we're more competitive than we've been in a long time at the corner. Uh, behind him, Adam King, WPNF. Kind of going on with that, the competitiveness from the defense, obviously you want to see your quarterback shine. How much do you merit do you give to the fact that the defense just looks that much better this, this offseason? Yeah, it's, it's something you always go through this time of, of season, and the easy thing to do is to all of a sudden try to change your scheme because maybe you know, one side seen the other side so much. You have 15 practices. Um, in the spring, and then you have the you know ten here. So now you're 25 practices in. It's the same thing over and over again. Um, and so you know one side starts to anticipate what the other is doing. And so today I talked to the staff and then talked to the team about just going right back to day one fundamentals because that's what it's going to come down to. It's going to come down to blocking. It's going to come down to getting off of blocks. And it's going to come down to toughness and running and hitting. So that's that's you know what we kind of went back at it today with, and we're going to continue to focus on that. Because there's going to be plays where, you know, an offense, the defense anticipates it, and maybe a corner sees a route that he's seen 20 times, he's going to jump it. Okay, that's part of the game. We're not going to all of a sudden start to out-scheme each other and get away from fundamentals, because that's ultimately what's going to matter. Uh, Go ahead. How 
how much, I know you want to see a quarterback shine, you know, and all the, the drills and everything, but how much are you watching the locker room uh, from afar and seeing who's kind of taking charge there and becoming a leader there? No, that's everything, yeah. I mean, it's, it's every day. The leadership is, is challenged. We have a leadership committee. Um, the locker room's right next to my office, so I'm, we're all in there all the time and talking to guys and getting a feel for it. Um, I've said this before, I feel like we have a mature team that has leadership and that has to count for something. So those guys have to you know, show that leadership and uh, be strong and, and call things out that need to be called out because they know what it looks like. You know, when you're young, you don't know what it looks like. You know, you're just kind of playing football. These guys know what it looks like. And so you know, that, that has to show up for us. Do you have uh, running back pecking order? Is there a one, two, three, four, five? And how would you play two, three, as many as four guys in a game or no? I think, first off, Trey has had um, a great offseason. And he's had a great first 10 days of practice. I think he looks fast. He's seeing the holes. Uh, he's involved on special teams. Uh, he's just overall, I can't say enough about the kind of uh, work he's putting in right now. Now he's got to go do it. And I know he's anxious to get back on the field. Um, you know, from there, you know, I, I think, you know, Mayan and, and, and Dallin, you know, Chip, Evan, you know, th those guys will all get in the game. You know, there's a lot of different ways that we can do that. Um, and we'll, we'll let them keep working. But um, there'll they'll be always, there'll always be opportunity. I mean, you know how it went last year, right? Usually around this time of year, they look at the everyone looks at the depth chart and says, "How are you going to get all these guys reps?" And we're halfway through the season, we can't find a running back. You know, it's just kind of how it goes. So um, I know those guys are, are taking care of their bodies. They all want to be healthy and they all want to play. Fourth or middle, Pat Murphy, twenty-four-seven sports. Ryan, uh, going back to the offensive line and in terms of how that impacts the quarterback, is it more difficult to find a new starting quarterback when you have? questions that you're still trying to answer on the offensive line? Um, no, I, I know what you're asking. I think, um, no, I, I don't think that's going to affect the quarterback play. I, I think, you know, the progress that's being made there, yeah, I, I don't I don't see that being an issue. I, I, I like the way we're trending. I think Justin's doing a great job, and I think, you know, we have a chance to have a really good O-line. Going back to the field fields real quick. Do you, did you see negatives on that that maybe you didn't anticipate in addition to some of the positives you've, you've addressed with us? Uh, no, I mean, it, it stresses out the line in some areas where maybe they have to take reps, that double the reps because maybe, you know, a guy's hurt or whatever. So you may have like, you know, three defensive tackles as opposed to four. So they got worn down or like a guard has taken maybe a few more reps than they typically would. But for the, the betterment of the whole, it was, it's been really effective. Um, I don't know how much longer we'll do it, but we did do it for one period again today. Um, the second period, we did two minute. We were all in one field. Um, we may do it for one more period uh, tomorrow. Um, but but then you know we get to the team periods later in the day. I mean, there's three different other sections where we're not doing it. So we try to mix it in, but it certainly has increased the amount of reps. Brent Romano, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Brian, we didn't see mine. Tyleek out there on Friday. Which are they doing with their status? Yeah, they're they're doing fine. Um, you know, they they have, you know, they should be back here in the short term. Um, we do have one update, right? Though on the long term, uh, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Court Court Williams, um, you know, suffered an ACL, so um, he's going to be out. Um, really, you know, feel awful for Court. You know, just feel like he can't, you know, catch a break. He's such a great young man, and um, so, you know, prayers are out to him and. You know, we're all rallying around court. And what happened about your, your situation at kicker? You have Parker and Jaden yep. going for that job. Um, what's the status of that competition? How are they doing? Are you close to having a guy there? Um, yeah, we, they're going back and forth as well. I, I think we probably will have a good idea where we're at. But, you know, by the end of the week, we'll give them one, one more opportunity. Um, but we're charting all the kicks. And um, the good news is we have two capable kickers there. But... Yeah, we probably need to decide who that's going to be here by the end of the week. Ryan, it, could you have named a starting quarterback today? In a, if it had, a, or would this be maybe still kind of too early? Probably, probably. Yeah, it, I guess if it was a different scenario, you'd probably be thinking what? Yeah, in the next couple of days. Yeah, I mean, I think. 
we were probably scheduled to do a press conference on Wednesday. That probably would have been about the right time. But, you know, we, we felt like the right thing to do is have the press conference today just to talk a little bit about the scrimmage before, you know, we, we get some of the other guys, um, you know, with you guys. But that probably in, you know, CJA or Justin's year was probably about that time. Practice, what, like 12 or 13. Um, but we're not there right now. So if if it's two really strong quarterback candidates competing versus maybe two guys who are obviously good players but haven't quite gotten there, how, how is that – I guess if you want to – which one is this here, but is that a different scenario? Like, man, they're both so good I can't decide, or neither has quite seized it I can't decide. Is that a different decision-making yeah, process? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's – somewhere in between the two of those. Um, you know, I, I do wish that, you know, somebody has really emerged. Um, and I don't think it's right now where we're two guys are just blowing it out of the water and you're like, oh, my God, I don't know who's going to play. But it's also not like they're not doing well either. I mean, they, there's there's really good play out there. There's um, there's ability. And, you know, now we're just looking for the consistency. Um, and... You know, again, you know, so what we'll practice 10, 10 today, you know, so we've still got, you know, 15 more before we play the first game. And, um, you know, quarterbacks are funny that way. You know, sometimes you, you think you know, and then you're right. Other times you're not, but you try to trust what, you know, what, what your experiences have been and what you see on film. And we chart everything. We look at the numbers and the analytics of it all, but we also get the eyeball test as well, the leadership. What are the guys in, you know, on the team thinking? You know, I'm going to, I've asked already, you know, what do you guys think here? You know, it's the other coaches and you know, the guys on defense just continually asking about what what everybody's take is because ultimately that's your that's your leader. How much are you individually as a head coach talking with Devin and Kyle during This is probably the only time I'm not talking to them right now. <laughs> you, and what do you are you just trying to get a read on them? Are you imparting wisdom? Are you making checking the all of the above. All of the above. Sure you're okay in a tough battle. All of the above. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. Front row left. Dave Biddle, 24/7 Sports. So Ryan, if it stays this close between Kyle and Devin, yeah. I'm sure this is not what you want to happen. Is there a chance that you guys could go into the season playing two quarterbacks, or do you subscribe to the theory if we have two, we have none? Just is there a chance that could happen? I mean, I, sure. I guess there's a chance. I mean, we'll kind of figure it out, you know. And it's it's hard to play the what if, but we we're getting closer. So. Um, yeah, I mean, if someone doesn't emerge, you know, you got to come up with a, with a plan. So um, we'll, we have our head down and just trying to work, and we haven't made it, you know, any decisions right now. When we have to make a decision, we'll make a decision. And back to the scrimmage real quick. Um, you mentioned you, you guys uh, recognized some champions that graded out over yep. 80%. Who were some of those guys, and how many roughly guys? Yeah, I, you know, I don't have the list in front of me, and I, I try not to um, put it out there because then I'm going to forget somebody and they get upset. You know how it goes. Uh, but we probably had about – 10 on offense and, and maybe maybe a dozen on defense um, right in there. Um, a couple of guys that did, st you know, st stood out was, was Cody Simon definitely stood, stood out, I think, on defense. Um, I really like the way, you know, Chip uh, played in the game. I thought he ran hard. You know, we didn't do a ton with Trey um, and Mayan, but, but, but Chip really got in there and ran hard. That was great to see. So, um, yeah, I, again, if I say a couple, I'll forget the rest of them. The way you talked last Wednesday about going into the scrimmage and I think you call it defining where, where you guys wanted to go, whether it's talking quarterback, you're talking other positions. Did that scrimmage not go the way maybe you guys had hoped it went? Because it doesn't sound like you're really ready to do much of anything. Today. No, I think it was a great scrimmage. I thought uh, it was physical. Uh, I liked the way the guys competed. Um, but to say that, you know, guys emerged, no. Um, it's just, you know, there's things there that, that are really good um, and then things that, you know, you wish were a little better. But, but no, it was a physical scrimmage. I thought the guys competed hard. I, I thought it was great. You know, we came out of it uh, healthy, you know, and really it was, a, it was, you know, we're tackling guys and it was, it was a lot of reps. Um, I think we were, you know, I think, let's see, it was 40. Yeah, we were north of like 115 snaps, 120 snaps, which, you know, with three groups is great. And so we got a lot done. Do you have an idea, at least, of where you want to go with places or do you feel like it's more wide yeah. open than it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's leaders in the clubhouse in certain positions. Um, yeah. Fourth row right, Andy Baxter and Letterman Ross. 
saw Argo Reese working at defensive end. Is that something you want to see full time from him? And what have you seen from his development so far? Well, uh, Coach Ginn, during the, the process of recruiting Arvell, had mentioned that maybe that was something that, that he foresaw could come down the road. And when Arvell got here, we immediately saw that he has a lot of talent explosive, twitchy, smart, just big. And he did a nice job at linebacker. We felt like maybe taking a look for a week at, at defensive end because he's going to get to 255, I mean, really fast. Um, that he, you know, has some twitch and has the strength and has the length to play at defensive end. And maybe as a freshman, that may be the best for him. Uh, we have not permanently made any decisions yet. If we feel like, you know, we had moved court to linebacker, and so we lost him. So if we get thin at linebacker, we may need to move him back a little bit. But we'd like to see if Arvell can get on the field as, as a freshman, um, certainly on special teams. But he has a unique skill set that, that we think he's got a bright future. So we're trying to, to see how this works. He's been great. His attitude's been great. And you know, we'll, we'll kind of see how the next week shakes. Ryan, uh, you guys, you know, you made a point at Big Ten Media Day to talk about defensive line rotation and how you kind of want to pair it down. But then we hear so much about Kenny Otta Jackson and how he's taken such a major step up. How do you square those things? Is there a chance that maybe there, there's a world where Kenny Otta is the guy starting out as JT or Jack? I mean, how do you, how do you see that pairing out when you have different styles of defensive? Yeah, I think we want to have guys that can that can take a workload of a whole game at starter level. And the more guys that we have that can do that, the better we are. Um, you know, when you're young, you think about where, you know, JT and Jack and Tyleek and Mike were. You know, they played as freshmen, they played as sophomores. They were still young. And so were they able to take that workload? You know, um, not all the time, sometimes. Um, and so that's been the challenge for that group now, the, the older group. But the more young players that can come on, great. And um, Kenyatta is coming on. He's doing a great job. And so is Caden Curry. And Mitchell Melton's been out there. So this is, this is all encouraging. And I think that's part of what we're talking about with, with the two groups. You're getting to see these guys work against uh, each other, and they're getting each other better. So um, yeah, I mean, that's a good problem to have. Guys like Kenyatta, uh, like CJ Hicks, like Sonny Salas, who you look at them when they're out there, they, they move a little different. They, they maybe are a touch higher class of athlete, but then they haven't been as consistent. When you get to see CJ and Sonny and Kenyatta in a scrimmage like Saturday, is that eye opening for you guys as a staff to say, okay, now that the light's coming on, or is it a reminder that they're still young and need to you know, get more consistent? Yeah, I, when you see someone. You know, run around, twitch. Arvell, we were just talking about. I think you just mentioned some of those guys. Yeah, they 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 just uh, gifted. And when they can, you know, we we want to be competitive. We want to be tough. We want to be smart. And in order to anticipate and play smart, you have to really do a lot of the work, and you have to get reps. And the more reps you get, the more you learn. You're gonna fail. We say to those guys all the time. The first time you jump on a bike, you know, you didn't just drive your bike. You ride your bike. You fell off. And so you're gonna fail. How quickly can you learn from your mistakes? That's the challenge. And the only way to do that is to, to continually get reps to learn and grow and get built. And, and so, you know, some guys are further along than others. And, uh, but that's, that's it. And then you have to make a decision somewhere along the process. Are, they, are these reps worth investing in this, this young man or not? Because some guys can, you know, get topped out for whatever those reasons are. I think all the guys you mentioned there, you know, have really high ceilings. Coach, on Friday, we got to see something in his field, kind of letting the offense know that they weren't playing up to their standard and everything, and, and reminded them that in three weeks we have to go try and win a game. Just Is that an example of leadership that you'd like to see somebody who's been there let them know that it's not, not good enough just yet? Absolutely. And that's what coaches will talk like. But then when your players are starting to do that, they understand the standard of what it should look like. And that's when you got a chance. And that's what I was mentioning earlier about the leadership guys who have been through, and that's a third-year guy, but he's been around, he's veteran. That, that class, that third-year class, they, they have some experience now. They have some maturity. But then you also have the fourth and fifth-year guys. And when it comes from the players and it's player-led, that's when you know you have something. So, you know, when something doesn't go well, you know, they can rally each other. And you, know, you, have, to, you have to work on that. 
you know, I challenge the leadership committee all the time. The only way to do that is to actually get up and speak in front of your, your peers. In today's day and age, as you know, everybody wants to be on their phone. It's a little different to get up in front of your peers and challenge them. And, you know, that, that, that's great for, for a Mecca to be able to do that. That's one example. But I've, I've seen multiple guys do that. And, and we just need more of it because we're going to have issues in the games. We're going to have the moments on the sideline where we have to rally the, the team. You know, moments where there may be, you know, a game-changing play. We talk about sudden change this year a lot. You know, when there's a sudden change, whether it's an explosive play or a change in field position, how are we going to respond? And it's one thing to come from the coaches, but it's another thing when it comes from the leaders. And so, yeah, we're really trying to foster that. One other thing, uh, the AP poll just came out, and uh, you're at number three in this poll, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State with one first-place vote. And then Alabama, LSU, just any thought about, uh, is this maybe a, a byproduct of people know about Marvin Harrison, they know about some of your high-end talent and expect you to be in this race at the end of the season? Or what yeah. do you think? Um, I'm not sure. I, I just know that um, it's going to matter at the end of the season what kind of football you know we're playing You know when we start talking about, about that part of it because um, you know, I don't really start looking at those things until we get to November because it does matter as you get to November for sure. But... Um, none of that stuff's going to matter if, if we don't win early on. And, you know, we have goals this year, and, and the first goal is to beat Indiana, you know. Um, and so, you know, we're going to first check that box off and go from there. Uh, we're in stoppage time right now, but I'll try to get a few more. Stoppage. Fourth row, Andy Andrews, 11 Warriors. Uh, yeah, just <laughs> um, Friday, um, something st stood out, at least just from our, our perspective watching practice through my perspective uh, was Kyle McCord, the pocket presence seemed to have a sense of when to climb, when to evade the rush. Is that something you see as a strength of his? And where does Devin Brown stand in that area as well? I think it's something that, that all the quarterbacks are starting to figure out. Um, you have to find the speed of the game. And you can't simulate a, a pass rush at all in the offseason. You know, you can throw routes on air, you know, when those guys are – or out there on their own, and you can throw seven on seven, or you know, do different things. But to actually simulate, you know, men trying to come in and, and tackle you, and, and def, you know, guys up front blocking, there's a lot that comes with that. And so, having the ability to see the coverage, see the routes, but feel the pocket, is something that's learned. You know, you don't just wake up one day and figure that out. And so we're we're really trying to force those guys to stay in there. And feel that feel that pocket because there's times to escape and there's times to slide and buy yourself time. You know, I show we show film of like you know Brady. You know, he couldn't really scramble, but he found time in the pocket. How? Because he would slide when when that was appropriate to buy himself time in the pocket and find the soft spot in the pocket. And there's times where it's time to escape. And then you have guys like Russell Wilson and Mahomes where they'll kind of slide up in the pocket and, and you know jump out for a couple seconds to extend the play and then give those receivers just another tick or two to, to find the ball or you know and then and then you have guys who just escape and go scramble those are all parts of the conversation and uh, this is not something you just you're born with I mean some guys have a good feel for it um, but you, you got to coach it and it's something that you know we talk about all the time right now and then also finding the speed of the game is important you know sometimes as quarterbacks you're like a step slow sometimes you're a step fast there's a rhythm and a speed of the game that um, what we have to talk about all the time is, as we're bringing these guys along. Second row right, Bill Landis, Rivals, the podcast. Uh, Ryan, just to follow up on offensive tackle, you, you think it is unlikely that you'll flip those guys back? You think Fryer and Luke are going to stay on the right side, Tegra and Josh Simmons are going to stay on the left side? Before we yeah, I don't, I don't think we made a final decision on that, but if I had to project that, I would say yes. Um, any kind of separation at center with Carson and Vic and, and Jacob coming out of the scrimmage? No, no, I, I don't think I'd, I'd like to mention that yet. I mean, I, you know, there was some decent play, um, but I don't think we're ready to identify somebody ahead of the other just yet. Yeah. And with, with the quarterback, you said you know, nobody has quite kind of blown you got blown out of the water yet, kind of wowed you with the way they're playing. Um, I think perhaps one way to view that is you have a third-year guy and a second-year guy, a guy who's played a considerable amount, started a game. Another guy who hasn't really done a whole lot. Shouldn't the older guy be farther ahead at this point? Do you view it that way? Do you sense any frustration with Kyle that it's still maybe tighter than people would expect given that dynamic? I'm not, I don't feel any of that. I know that you know all those guys want to play and, and they're competing. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, you know, you'd like to think that you're you're simulating a game in practice, but it's not quite the same. So those are all things we'll have to take into consideration. Yeah. Front row, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Is is it first of all, if you want to update us Wednesday, feel free. <laughs> um, is it truly even at quarterback, or is one guy ahead in your mind, but not enough to say a whole lot about it? And what would, what's maybe the one thing that you want to see from each of those guys that could put them over the top? I mean, that's a word I keep saying. That, you know, consistency. You got to be able to do it over and over and over again. You know, it's not good enough to just do it. You know, two or three times and then throw an interception. Like you just can't do that. And the, and the expectation, the standard here is very, very high. But all these guys knew that when they came here. You know, we all agreed on that in recruiting. Um, it, you know, where is it at? I, don't, I mean, I could give you a list of the things that both of them are doing well and then a list of the things that they're not doing well. Um, I just don't think as I sit, sit here right now that I could name one the starter. Um, but I know it's a long season, and, you know, it will continue to the thing. And who knows, maybe in the next few few days, or by the end of the week, you know, someone really just takes the next step. But we're trying to give these guys, you know, the opportunity in as many reps as possible to try to, you know, show us that they can do it. You said you are confident that Justin can get that offensive line where it needs to be. Yeah. Um, there's still a lot of moving parts. Uh, is that normal for this time of camp, or would you like to see it more settled? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 there hasn't been a lot of moving parts since we since we made that move. So, I mean, we're we're kind of settling into it and. You know, I, I I think we're actually in a pretty good place right now. Yeah. And final questions, uh, front row, Tim May, Letterman Row on three, and the Tim May podcast. Uh, that's a lot. Uh, Ryan, uh, as as you look at the tight end situation now, has Jelani picked up where he left off in the spring, Jelani Thurman, and uh, what is just sort of your pecking order there right now from your vantage point? Yeah, I think uh, you know, Joe has been out um, and so hasn't practiced a whole bunch. Uh, I think G has done his best. He's you know he's the best version of himself right now. He's practicing well. He's out there. Um, I think you know Cade's the starter. Cade um, has been solid in there. He's he's had a really good camp. You know he's someone that's very very important to our offense. But G's really shown that you know we can trust him in certain things right now. And so he's got to keep building on that. But you know the tight end position, it's a tough position. I mean it, it's a you got to put your hard hat on every single day, and you got to bring it. And you got to block like a lineman and run routes like a wideout. So, G's learning that part of it. Um, you know, we'd like to get Joe back out there so we can get him going. Um, Jelani's just—you know, you can see the talent, you can see all that, but but learning how to do all those things and put it all together. There's a lot of job descriptions, and so um, there's at times he's figuring all that out. Yeah, put me in your head uh, for a second. Are you the kind of guy when you make a decision on a quarterback, because it, it usually is the biggest decision on a team, usually. Are you the kind of guy that you make a decision at the end of a day and then you sleep on it and come back the next day and revisit it? You know what I mean? I, just well, what, Some days you go to bed thinking, okay, I know where this is going. The next day you're like, okay, I, I, so much for that. Yes. And so what will it come down to for you? Obviously, you know, we talk about consistency and all this kind of stuff, but do you feel a clock ticking right now, or is that – What's going on in your head in that regard? I mean, I'd like to get a, you know, this week under our belt and then kind of go from there. You know, I, I wish I had like a, um, a protocol that like, okay, this is how we do it. But I just think with this position and the, and the way things shake out, you, you have to try to figure out what's right in this moment and uh, try to do the best we can with that. And you got to have a starter for the opener. I mean, uh, are you the kind of guy that would go into the open? Okay, you're starting, but this is still open. I mean, how would you? Never done that before. Yeah. I'd rather not. But again, we'll, we'll try to do what's best, you know, and best for the team. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yep. Coach, thank you so much. All right, guys. Yep. Yep.